hello friends welcome to another baby peeps tutorial for today this tutorial is presented to you by be bold forex bbfx so today we are going to continue from course 2 earlier on we completed preschool and we have discussed what forex is how do you trade forex when can you trade forex who trade forex why trade forex and today we will consider uh, the course 2 which is the kindergarten and the topics we will be discussing today is one brokers two three types of chart analysis and three types of charts pattern so to begin let's roll the intro <laughs> Alright guys, and to begin, uh, let's look at what we will have in today. Uh, so in course 2.1, Brokers 101, we are going to discuss about brokers, what you should know about brokers, uh, the type of brokers there are, and the type of uh, how to know, how to select a good broker, and how to decide if your broker is one. And then 2, 1, 2.2, 2 .2 rather, we will be discussing types of uh, ana analysis three types of chart analysis fundamental technical and sentiment and then three to run it off we'll be talking about chart patterns types of charts so let's begin by discussing the history of forex of retail forex trading did ret uh, retail forex trading come into being well it came into popularity during the time when the internet came you know came into being that was during the 90s so during the 1990s uh retail forex trading came into play came into being initially there was nothing like retail forex right nobody can trade the forex market uh from from your home yeah, everybody did that through forex brokers they either call the forex broker to take positions for them which they always do or or traders who have access to the trading floor to the pits right the trading pit floor so but during the advent of the internet in the year 90s in the 90s right there was so much back and forth with how people should trade the forex trade forex right and so the com 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 commodity Fut futures trading commission the cftc they decided that it is enough and they came up with a policy named commodity exchange act and the commodity futures modernization act and that gave the uh gave birth to forex online brokers so it's wiped out of uh offline forex trading whereby you have to call your broker to execute your trades but rather gave birth to forex brokers who come on the internet and you a trader you and i can go and open up account with them and then basically execute our trade so that's how uh, forex trading came into being i mean the history of retail forex came to play so that's basically what it is all about so let's move on to uh types of brokers now you have to pay attention to this because it's very very important so forex broker types dealing desk and no dealing desk what do they mean so straight to the point one we have two types of brokers dealing desk brokers right and then two no dealing desk so you have to know which broker that you should pick having discussed this section now the dealing desk brokers uh they basically they are also called market makers and then the no dealing desk brokers they are divided into two categories one straight through processing stp and two electronic communication network and straight through processing and so what are they let's discuss what is a dealing desk broker now what dealing desk brokers do is this they actually they are market makers they make uh the market for you like they set they have their own bid and ask price which is fixed and they set it there so when you are dealing with the dealing desk brokers because it's a dealing desk they they are the ones 
making the market for you so you come to them to to deal with them you have to deal with them according to their own bid and ask price which they have set and it's fixed right it's just like going to uh the boots when you want to change your currency to any currency or whatever suppose you are traveling out and they tell you this is the, the the fee that we are charging to change this money for you this is what you get right and so that is how dealers dealing these brokers are their their prices are fixed and they make up their prices so basically since they are the ones making up the prices both the build and the ask price it is impossible for them to actually make a loss I mean they are always on the winning side so clients of the dealing desk brokers they do not see the the interbank market rates they do not know the rates but it doesn't mean that they are shitting you of course they have you know commissions but you do not know how far those commissions go so that is what the desk brokers they do they set the prices for you right so they add their own you know their own their own profit or whatever it is their own take uh talking in addition to the prices from the from the interbank rates so look at this picture here here you are the forest trader this is you right and you you, you make an order maybe buy or sell and it goes through your trading platform and this is where the dealing desk is so they receive your orders and how do they execute your orders if the trade is going to be your winning trade right they know so what they do is that they match your trade with somebody else who is going to lose right so you know if you if you are buying there must be somebody selling if you are selling there must be somebody buying right so let's say you are selling they match your trade and somebody has taken a, a wrong position right person is buying whereas the market is, is selling so that person that is selling uh that is a uh, buying they'll take his trades to match it with yours and then you win the trade however if you execute a trade and you are losing the trade what they do is they, they counter trade you so they come if let's say you sell and the market is going up which is for buy and you are losing money they immediately buy it right so they make all the profits they make the money so that is what uh dealing desk brokers they do now what about uh, a no dealing desk broker as the name suggests the no dealing desk brokers they do not you know take the other side of the trade right what they do is that they take you directly into the market they do not take the side of the clients at the trade as simply link between two parties so the dealing desk broker they do not match you against uh, uh, a losing trader like the other like the like the dealing desk they do what they do is that once you execute your trade through the trading platform they take you straight through the interbank market and like we discussed we are at the last when it comes to the hierarchy of players in the foreign market foreign exchange market we have the banks the hedge funds the mutual uh, funds other banks and other clients so they take your trades and they dump it in this pool right here so your trades actually compete with all these people who are participating in the market and just guess what this is where you get the actual exchange rates uh, good prices and all of that that comes with it so they just process your, your trades you know to the market directly without them without uh setting a fixed uh spread spread and all that we'll talk about that as we go on so what they actually do they are like the middlemen they just take it they just process your trade i think that's simple for you to understand there's nothing much more to say about that so uh the no dealing desk they can either charge a very small commission for the trading so they just add a little markup to their spread yeah that's it so no dealing desk can either be a straight to processing or straight through processing uh, plus an electronic communication network you have to know stp stands for straight through processing ecn electronic communication network so whenever you're choosing your broker you watch out for this now what is an S so let's talk about stp brokers what is an stp broker so how do they carry out their executions or your orders 
like we said they are straight through processing system so they process your orders directly to the market however stp brokers they do not have access to the interbank rates but they do have access to liquidity providers liquidity pro providers on the other hand they have access to the interbank rate or inter interbank market so stp they hook up to liquidity providers who in turn hook up to interbank market right now stp providers they have more than one liquidity provider they have three four five six why do they do this so that they can have the best prices and that is where they make their money the difference in the bid and ask prices so look at this chart for example let's say the SAP provider has three liquidity providers ABC and in the bid section because that is where you buy I mean that is where you sell rather the price is let's say for EU whatever pay the price is 1.2998 1.2 and 1.3 thousand right for the bid and the ask price is 1.301 and 1.301 and again and 1.302 so with this information from the providers and the system of the straight through processing uh, broker so their system will route between the best and the worst price so if you look from this part of this of the bid what is the best price it is 1.2998 is the cheapest right to sell and which one is the worst price to buy look at 1.3002 so you agree is the worst to buy so the difference between this and the d and this that is where the brokers they make their commission now for instance if you look at uh say you want to sell high buy low that is what they actually do behind the scenes right behind the scenes the broker will sell at this price right and the broker will buy at this price so you have they will have they'll be having the bid and ask price of one three thousand one three thousand and one just one pip but for you the trader who is buying from them or selling through them right this is what you will see in your chart they will give you the worst price 1.299 and 1.3002 and two, right so the one pip difference here <coughs> is not what you'll be getting you'll be getting a three pip difference right here and of course we know they are not a charity organization so they must make uh, a money from you as well uh, from all the systems they are running, paying staffs and all that, so they definitely make money. So that is how the street through processing broker they execute your trades, and that is how they also make money. And the other time we talked about brokers who uh, should show their spreads for you. So there is nothing more to this than uh, what we have just discussed. So what about an uh, S ECM broker now the ECM broker is more advanced than than STP pro, uh, uh, broker the ECM broker allows you to interact with the orders of other participants like they have deeper access into the market they just take your orders and dump it in the pool and so your pri your, your orders compete with others and that's when you get the best rates so the participants could be the banks it could be retail traders it could be hedge funds and it could be even other brokers so in this way nobody's trading against you your offerings are just going to the direct market rates so uh, this is all we'll take for uh, this section I mean that's basically all to it all you should know and all that this session is actually talking about we have not skipped anything i mean I, I took my time to talk slowly and try to explain so that you can understand and uh in our next session which we are going to right now i'll basically tell you the kind of brokers i will choose and you should choose as well so let's go and do some comparison
Dylan Desk versus not Dylan Desk brokers. So which type of broker should you go for? Now let's read the advantages and the disadvantages, right? Dealing desk broker, which are the market makers who make the prices for you without you knowing or taking your orders to the pool or to the to the depth of market, they have fixed spreads. They also take the opposite side of your trade. They also have artificial quotes, right? Then the orders are filled by a broker on a discretionary basis. Now, no dealing desk straight through processing broker they have most they have uh, most uh, variable spreads which means the spreads are not constant right they are not fixed they compete with the interbank rate then they simply charge between client and liquidity providers because they're like middlemen right so that's exchange a little uh, pp difference is their commission then the prices come from the liquidity providers unlike the market makers who have artificial quotes right their own comes from the liquidity providers then there are there is automatic execution and no recourse i don't know if we didn't talk about this automatic execution you know when you take a trade through and not dealing this uh, broker they take your trace directly you don't have record however for a market maker during market conditions sometimes they not sometimes what they always do they will they will when you execute a trade at a particular you know rate they will send you a message and say no you cannot be uh taken into this trade at, at this rate a new rate has come up do you want us to execute this trade with this new rate you will not say yes or you will not say no remember why are they doing this because they are the market makers they are the one making the market for you so this is what always happens with market maker brokers right so they make the market and their spreads some people say where well, they like the spread their spread is good but no you don't want to go with a market maker broker right there are lots of things that happens with them so please 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 then uh no dealing desk stp and ecm broker they also have variable spreads or commission fees which is good right they are also a bridge between client and liquidity liquidity providers and other participants right then the prices come from liquidity providers and other ecm participants which is great then there is no automatic i mean the executions are automatic and there are no records right then they display the depth of the market or liquidity information so they take a trade down to the the pool whereby you have the best and best of market rates so if somebody should ask me uh which kind of broker should we should i go for if you should ask so i'll basically say look for a broker who has this straight through processing plus electronic communication network broker in the absence of this go here non-dealing desk but a straight through processing broker but is that all to to choosing a good broker no we'll still find out more as we go on so another thing too is that even though you have gotten a, a good broker right it doesn't mean automatically you'll become you'll be winning trades and you should not be blaming your losing trades on your broker your broker don't know what's going on between you your trades and how you trade so you should be able to be a good uh trader the other that way you do not you know blow your account so if you do not have a good trading uh, experience if you do not have good trading skills if you do not have good trading plan and if you do not have uh, tr good trade psychology and good trade discipline you still end up blowing your account and if you continue blowing your account you might have the tendency of blaming your broker whereas your broker is not to be blamed but rather you 
so you have to know know this yeah there are bad brokers out there but first you have to do your part of being a good trader okay so let's move on what is a spread in forex trading we have talked about this so i'm not going to spend time to talk about this again let me just give a hint the spread is the difference between the bid and the ask ask uh price that is your spread and we also say that a spread is a commission your broker is taking let's say for example you have an old iphone let's say an iphone 11 you want to sell for instance or an iphone 12 or an i pro max x i don't i don't know whatever it is but let's say you bought the iphone at uh 700 usd and now you want to sell the iphone because you've used it you agree in your heart that way if you sell the iphone for 500 well you'll be you'll be great so you went to the pawn shop and you go to the pawn shop and the 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 buyer there at the pawn shop said well we, we can buy your iphone for 500 because that's how that's the amount we sell you the iphone at the shop but see i'll do you a deal i'm gonna buy your iphone for 4.99 and you're like well it's okay i'm gonna buy I, i'll sell it and you sell to the pawn shop at 4.99 now the pawn shop is gonna make a dollar if they sell the phone for 500 usd now that dollar that dollar is the spread which is the difference between the bid and the ask price the price at, at which you are willing to sell and the price at which they are willing to buy right one dollar that's it so the spread is the commission your broker takes for putting you into the trade so this chart that you are seeing here is basically explaining what a spread is so this is the base currency and this is the quote currency this is the bid and this is the ask now the price let's say you want to sell or you want to if you are buying you are buying higher because you have to wait for the price to uh to go more than 1053 before you make profit right so let's say you want to execute this trade as it is right now what it is what what is the spread right 1051 minus uh 1053 that's going to give you minus two so that's you are in deficit if you are selling you are selling at a loss of minus two so the two is the two pips so whenever you execute the trade and if you say sell and you click on sell right you're going to be going down in minus two 0 0.002 in your chart in your uh uh yes your meta trader for whereby you you execute your trade so what types of spreads are there there are fixed spreads there are variable spreads so look at this chart here this is basically how it looks like you see fixed spreads you see the difference between the the, the sell uh the buy and the sell price it is fixed but look at the variable spreads right you see market price is coming getting closer sometimes it goes up sometimes it comes closer and all that and the times the moment where you have you know so much huge uh, spread like this this is basically when there are news in the market and now you have to understand that news they greatly affect the movement of price um, um, of prices in the market so at when you see spreads going up just know there are major news and during major news this is what happens spreads increase at the time all over all market all, all uh forest brokerage yeah so that is uh basically what it is uh what are the advantages of trading with fixed price like some people say because it is fixed and comfortable but there are disadvantages as well what are the disadvantages like we said the other time recourse it frequently occurs you will not be giving the you will, you will not be your trades will not be executed at the amount of prices you want your trades to be executed so they will be giving you recourse no you can't take this trade at this time uh do you want us to, to execute your trades at these prices you know that's what happens many of the time with uh, uh fixed uh fixed price fixed price with market uh makers or dealing this forest brokers then then also there's this slipperish right slippage prices are moving fast the broker is unable to consistently maintain a fixed spread and the prices that you finally end up are entering a trade after entering a trade will be totally different than the intended price that is entered for you 
and so when your prices at which you want to enter and trade is not entered and different prices uh, is filled up for your trade that is called slippage now what about variable spreads so variable spreads like i said is is the best for example you shall see your spreads go at 0.002 to piece of spread difference and at other times you see your spreads widen out to 20 pips 0.20 it is normal it happens all the time and believe believe me <laughs> i like variable spreads because when the spreads increases like this i know there is news i stay in the market and i know after the news right when all the bubble up and down is over the spread will return back to this again so you do not need to be afraid what's up what are the advantages of trading with variable spreads should you really read this let's just read one variable spreads eliminate experiencing recalls fine that's it uh what are the disadvantages of trading with variable spreads variable spreads aren't ideal for scalper for scalpers right yeah you don't want to be a scrapper we'll talk about that later on so let's let's move ahead variable spread is the best spread right between which is which I don't know but I can tell you since you are listening to this video from us variable spread is the best spread you should go for okay and uh, ah, that's it uh, calculating spread cost and calculations you cannot honestly speaking you can't be looking at the bid and the ask price and be using that to determine your spread I don't do that there is a tool right that calculates the spreads for you automatically and i'm going to give that uh, to to you as well i'm going to send it to you uh, so you just click the tool and whenever you open your chart it's always there let's move on to the next lesson six crucial things to consider when choosing a forest broker so what are the things you should consider when choosing a forest broker number one security and most forest brokers they have regulatory agencies right and these are the regulatory agencies you should be looking at for when you're choosing a uh, forest broker ensure your broker is regulated by one of these the united states has the national futures association and commodity futures trading commission as the regulating agency uh, for all forest brokers in the u.s the uk has the financial conduct authority and Prudential Regulatory Authority. Australia has the Australian Securities and Investment Commission, Switzerland, Swiss Federal Banking Commission, Germany, Bundesen, I don't know how to speak German, this is German, and France, authorities of, uh, ma is, it, is, this, is this merchandise, uh, finances, financiers, or what? Then Canada, Investment Information Regulatory Organization of Canada, so if you are from the united states make sure your broker is regulated by nfa and cfc uk fca just watch out for this okay when picking a broker transaction costs make sure that uh, your broker is being honest when it tells you it has zero spreads even if it says it has zero spreads believe me the the spread is already calculated into the bid and the ask price so that's why they say zero spread so you do not see no spread there it is false but make sure you are able to determine to know that this broker is good is reliable just just type the name of the broker and in, on google and ask cam in front of it it will come up for you let's say let's do one real quick let's say uh uh f x c m scam okay then you'll be able to look for reviews of uh forest uh brokers fscm review 2020 and and all that so this is actually how to look for for reviews for forest brokers then deposit and withdrawal your broker should be able to allow you to deposit money and to withdraw as quick as possible then trading platform they should also have an awesome trading platform uh, like many brokers they, they do use the metatrader 4 right so what about execution your your trade should be able to be executed without recourse without um, 
uh, no surprises under normal no, normal market conditions there should be no no surprises then customer service your broker should be able to have a good customer service as well like mine they do all right you can message them they can send you messages back i mean you can also have a live chat with them yeah that's very very important and uh, beware of forex bucket shelves so what are forex bucket shelves now back in the 90s i mean before uh retail forex brokers came into being on the internet before then traders used to call their forex bro uh, broker and to tell them to execute the trades for them and so they execute the trades but forex bucket shops they are brokers actually those brokers this is what they do they they <laughs> look at this picture it's very funny but you can see a ravenous dog right here and look at ships looking for ships to i mean you know to plunder so basically this is what forest brokers do this is the forest broker look at him here and these are your, the clients like you so when the client calls the broker and say execute my trade as so 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 and so and so the broker will take the order and write it on a piece of paper and after the phone call is ended the broker will dump the, that that uh, order in a bucket actually on a physical bucket right but why instead of executing the trades they decide to dump the, the order on the bucket that's why they are called bucketeers so what they do is that they wait and they just see how to make money off of you right so one they decide to either execute the trade or not to execute the trade and if they execute the trade if it is going to be profitable right they, de they determine when to close the trade in your favor but when they themselves will make more, more much more profit than you in that trade two so if it's going to be a losing trade they might just decide to use you you know to hedge themselves out so that they don't lose in front of the market but rather you lose and if it's going to be a break-even trade like you're not going to make nothing they'll just tell you well uh it was a break even no trades and all that i mean no profits it, it, the trades didn't do well today why is that so you do not have the opportunity to know what the exchange rate is i mean what the price is doing at that particular time you do not know right so basically you you can only tell you can only tell from what they tell you so they are really really shady they are really really shady however as we have been going through this course we are now going to see uh how to protect yourself against uh forest broker scams yeah so one way to do so is to compare prices uh, from the price feeds you can open like two or three uh, uh, um, brokers down let's do so let's do so right now let's go to tradingview.com and over here let's go to uh, dailyfxfx.com and see how we can compare prices let's see how we can compare prices uh, why are the quotes not showing here the quote should be showing here I don't know I think it's my system my, my network uh, also okay see for trading view okay it's only telling us how far the percentages it has gone down on up okay look at the top uh, the prices right now for EU is uh, 17 17800 is fluctuating right up and down okay good 17800 as well here 803 802 you see so you have to look for a broker that is spread it's like this one broker that I like I, I don't trade with trading view because it's in the US so I, I'm not able to open an account with them but I definitely recommend trading view because uh, most of the friends I have from the US trading the forest market they always use tradingview.com ah uh, sorry did I say tradingview tradersway tradersway.com I'll talk about tradingview later on I wanted to say tradersway so tradersway is coming up if you are from the US they should be able to give us uh, their shark let's see how do we find this out mm. 
Markets. Markets. Okay, good. I think I just saw that before we hit the click button. Okay, 1798. You see? Two pip spread. You see? 1798. They have 0.02 pips. 1798. Let's see. Here, 1794. Right? So, 1797 and 1799. Here we have 1798, the bid and the ask price. So you see, they tell you the spreads of two. It's going up three now. That is a commission. So basically, if you are from the United States of America and you want to trade the forest market and you're looking for a broker, go with this traders way. They are good. You see the spreads moving now is now 0 0.3. Here for GU is 0 0.8. For USCH 0.4, UJ 0.6. Whereas for UJ over here, I think this broker is is charging way more than that. Open this up. Let's look. Uh, market watch. Let's see. You see, the broker I'm using is charging 10 cents. 10. Whereas let, let's go to his site. Let's go to his site. ax.com. So, for those of you watching from the United States of America, from uh, Britain, you can choose from US. This is this trader is in the United States. I'll show you a broker from the UK. His name is uh, FX Pro. Com. I basically was using this broker before now before I stopped using him because I wasn't able to deposit 10 bucks in my account when I was when I was when I started out so but I'm gonna go back to this guy very soon this people very soon because I think I mean I'm enjoying them more than these guys which I'm using right now so let's we're basically doing comparing brokers right so it's important we do this uh, so EU is 17808 right now, right here. So what do we have here? 178, 177. So you see, right here, his spread is higher, right? But he's not telling us. Let's see prices. Price is our trading pricing model. Let's open this up real quick. No dealing desk uh, award. Yeah, it's your special prize, man. No records, positive records, negative records. So, I want to see your prizes. That's what I want to see. Oh, stop showing me these pictures. I don't want to see all this. Uh, funding tools, futures, energies. Mm. Why can't I see prices? Uh, but anyway, you get the idea. I'll, I'll do a research. I mean, a, a, a thorough investigation with this uh, trader and with this broker. Mm shortly no one seven eight three seven what is it here one seven eight uh two two i think fx pro three seven i think i think they are not doing right Think they don't do right. I think they don't do right. So, all right, guys, because it's a crash course, you, you do just do your your own due diligence, right? Do your own investigation and see how the shots are going, what the the, the brokers are doing, how much they are charging. If you're from Africa, if you are from 
Nigeria, if you are from South Africa, uh, Ghana, you can use this broker. Alright guys, so I figured out the site, it's Globex, <coughs> uh, Globex360.com, it's a South African broker actually, and I got this uh, broker authorization, what do you mean? Okay, the code is there. I think it's that code is there. That's your Uh, it's a South African broker, and uh, there are some group of traders whom I really uh, like their trades. They are great traders, and uh, they are good traders from South Africa, so they recommended this broker actually, and that's uh, why I'm also putting it up here. I do not know where you're watching from or you're watching this video from. So if you're from South Africa, I think this is a broker that is good. Uh, let's check the rates. Mm. Okay, 17,860 on 17, 17,860 right now. So let's see. Treat us with 17,8,61, Yeah, almost same thing. Same. I think it's a. I think they're great. 17861 for FX Pro. No, no, this is no, this is I'm so disappointed. I can't find their their rates online. I should you should be able to see the rates online just as we are seeing it here. We're seeing it with traders. We uh let me check one more stuff. The trader I was I con I had con contacts with years ago. He recommended this broker fx glory from the united states so you basically want to check that out so so 17875 17874 so they have three pips spread right 17874 877 three pips that's a commission so it is very low if you are from the united states please don't go looking for another broker go with these guys here traders way go with them if you are from uh, Af Nigeria, uh, South Africa, or whatever, what have you, you might want to go with these guys here, XNES. I use them presently. Okay, guys, let's go back to our course. Uh, we are still here. Compare prices. That's what we actually went there, right? Then record everything you have been doing. File a legal action. If you see your broker do something wrong, you can file a legal action against him or her. And since they are especially from the US the, uh, and all those advanced countries, uh, they are actually well monitored. So you, you actually have no, no, no time to file a legal action against them because they actually take their trades and their business seriously. So, okay, so that's the last part. Okay, so how do you open a Forex account? Basically, I mean, it's simple. It's simple. Let's use Traders with, for example, ready to start trading. Okay, let's say apply online. So once you click the apply online, if it is for FX Pro, you see open an FX Pro account, you click on it. If it is for what is it called, uh, Globex 360, what you should do is create open account. And if it's for FS Glory, this is FS Glory. Mm, the one I told you the other time. If it's, you just say open an account, a live account, or open a demo account. It's quite simple as that. And um, yeah, they have their spreads here as well. Market and instant execution. Look at the spreads. Three pips spreads. Three pips. Right? So. If you're from the United States watching this video, pick a brokers like this who tell you what they do with their spreads, how much they're making from your trades. So I believe we have definitely talked about how you and I can pick good Forex and FX Pro and all that. So traders way registration, this is how to register. And you can see it has uh, MT4 ECN so it's an ecm broker right electronic communication network like we said we say pick a broker that has this function or this feature ecm and that's what you got and that's what you've got in traders way right so i mean it's it's quite clear so register drop your document they will verify you they will ask you for your driver's license or or uh yeah identification card 
uh, a passport whatever it is you are using to identify yourself you do ask for those documents from you you to make sure that you are real you have to put it up there for them upload them and then the, that's it then it is recommended and advised that you start trading demo first do not put a real money yes we said that in course one trade with a demo account because if you trade with a demo account you know if you <laughs> If you confidently go like I'm a good skill trader and you know you don't trade with a demo account, should we watch this video? Uh, you might in the first place you know have the dogs in bow. You might you know knock somebody out and all that. But if you do not practice and perfect your skill, I mean there's no perfection in it, right? But if you do not practice, if you do not practice very well. Uh, you will hurt yourself in the first round. This is might be you, and this might be the market. You might knock the market out, right? Hmm. Then <laughs> you might even win the trades, right? However, if you go back to fight again <laughs> with the same market, this will happen to you. Watch, boom, and it will just be your turn down on the floor. <laughs> guys let's not watch this so that's the market for you so I'll, i'm going to take a break and i'll be back and we'll discuss the last part